Hi, I'm Rob Geller. And I'm Chandler Swift. And we're here to talk to you about a project we built. We built a device that controls the motion of magnetic bacteria using electromagnets controlled by a joystick. We built everything from scratch, and that's what we're going to talk with you about next. Okay, so we're going to explain to you some hardware we made to manipulate uh, magnetic bacteria, magnetotactic bacteria is their technical name, uh, in two dimensions. So you can see the hardware here for this experiment, uh, but first I want to talk about the magnetic bacteria themselves and how we exploit their properties uh, for the experiment. So what I have here is a picture of the magnetic bacteria, and you can see along their body axis a whole chain of uh, magnetic uh, nanoparticle magnets that they synthesize. And they also have a flagellum. What they can do is act essentially like a compass needle, which is magnetized and aligns itself in the Earth's magnetic field. In this case, these two act like a compass needle um, and align themselves in Earth's magnetic field and then swim in the direction of the field. And they use this in order to avoid high oxygen concentrations near the surface of uh, freshwater bodies. So these are aquatic uh, anaerobic or microaerobic bacteria. They're essentially trying to find the sediments which are lower oxygen so they will swim down and can penetrate uh, deeper into that sediment. So we're going to exploit that by providing a magnetic field that is not Earth's magnetic field. So we're going to exploit the properties of the magnetic bacteria uh, with this hardware. And in particular, we're going to make our own magnetic fields, and they are going to be electromagnetic fields uh, produced in these coils uh, that can be controlled with this joystick. So we've got a joystick here that can change not only the amplitude of the magnetic field, but the direction of the magnetic field. And the way we have it hooked up, it can move in, uh, we can change the magnetic field, we can point the magnetic field um, anywhere in, in uh, 2D. So as we move the joystick around, we can change the magnetic field and move the bacteria. So, uh, let me explain a little bit of the layout of the hardware. Here's our power supply, and for reasons of um, circuit design that we'll get to a little later, we chose to use a power supply that went from minus 12 volts to plus 12 volts with a, a common in the center, which uh, we might refer to as a zero volt. And um, inside here, Obviously, we have the joystick, uh, but we also have all of our electronics packed in here. This box was a little bit too small. Um, it ended up uh, uh, being pretty difficult to fit everything we needed in there. Um, and then the amplified signal from the joystick um, goes out to these two uh, electromagnets. And they're at right angles with respect to each other so that they control a magnetic field component in the x-direction and the y-direction, and then the, the uh, sum of those vector components gives you um, a magnetic field in any direction. So our two electromagnets uh, produce our uh, magnetic field components in the x and y directions, and the way we've shown it here, they're pulled back. When we actually, use, so that you can see them, when we actually use them, these soft iron cores, they, these are designed so that they can come in and get right up next to the sample uh, that contains the bacteria and for, for this magnet as well. The soft iron core is chosen because it, uh, it amplifies the magnetic field that's produced in the solenoid here. This is wrapped in black tape, but this is just your usual copper wire electromagnet. And um, the, the soft iron core amplifies that magnetic field, but it's also chosen because it uh, has a very low residual field. So once we turn off the coil, the residual magnetization inside that um, 
uh, core is, is very low compared to some other materials. So that's what uh, made us choose that material. But we needed a long piece so that we could keep our bigger coils off the stage of the microscope. There's not much room there, but as you can see, reach in and really create a nice, strong magnetic field. These coils are ultimately, uh, we, can, we can run them off one or two volts. So uh, we have many wraps and uh, low current, uh, less than an amp. And so it's quite uh, simple to produce the, the fields you need. Now we're gonna talk about how we confine bacteria into a small spot. We use this device, which is called a magnetic focal plane. But before we get into that, we need to talk about how bacteria move in magnetic fields. Here you see a bacteria with its flagellum. The strong shows a bar magnet, but really they have many small nano-sized magnets forming a long chain. Bacteria align itself along the magnetic field like a compass does, but with the flagellum, the bacteria swim along the magnetic fields. So, why do these bacteria res or why are these bacteria responsive to magnetic fields? Uh, the key is is that they're anaerobic, which means they need to avoid high levels of oxygen. And since they live in water, the surface has more oxygen. They need to know which way is down so they can swim in that direction. So their magnetic response enables them to know which way is down. Now getting back to the magnetic focal plane, we need to understand the pattern of the magnetic field created by a barred magnet. Uh, here we just show the region that matters for this project, but keep in mind uh, the bacteria will swim along the magnetic field lines. So what we're showing here is how a bacteria sample is placed under the microscope. The gray feature is a water drop containing the bacteria. It's placed onto a cover slip and then flipped upside down to form what is called a hanging drop. Now look at the field produced by one of the magnets near the hanging drop. Our goal is to direct the bacteria into a small spot in the center. Uh, this small spot is what we call a peloton. Also, um, a bacteria needs to be pushed against the bottom of the cover slip, uh, so the bacteria are confined, to, uh, confined in the focal plane of the microscope. Uh, notice that the vector components of the magnetic field will push the bacteria both up and in, just as we need. By adding magnets, you can start to confine bacteria in two dimensions. And with a full ring of magnets that we call Stonehenge, the bacteria can be directed to the center. In this drawing, the outer ring is the magnets with the north poles facing up, and the inner ring is the bacteria swimming inward. So here is the final device without a cover slip or a hanging drop. We call this the magnetic focal plane. Uh, the cover slip with the hanging drop fits right over the yellow spacer. Uh, the size of the bacterial spot depends on how many bacteria are in your sample, uh, but it's typically a fourth of a millimeter. What we have here is just an adapter we made for the iPhone, uh, the iPhone 5 actually, where we can clip this device with this holder um, to the front of the uh, microscope, and it actually just... Um, attaches with this little bungee cord and it works great um, to actually not only take pictures of our uh, samples but video of course too and um, the camera just pops in and out and it actually still leaves the other eyepiece open so that the camera can go in one and you can look through the other. So it's, 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 it's very functional. At the core of the electronics to um, power the electromagnets uh, is something called a push-pull circuit with uh, two amplifiers. Um, let me first point out the way it works is you take an NPN uh, transistor and a PNP transistor and for this kind of circuit, they're usually um, purchased uh, together and I think is what's called a, a complementary pair. And the basic idea, the reason why you can't do the job with just a single transistor amplifier, amplifying current through a coil, so this is our, our coil here and this is one um, transistor. The reason why a single transistor won't work is because if you want the bacteria to swim in the opposite direction, you need to change the direction of the magnetic field. And for uh, our setup, that means you need to change the uh, direction of the current through the coil. 
So what we needed to do for our um, simple arrangement of coils is be able to drive the current in one direction, that's called the push, okay? And you would do that whenever the joystick is, say, you know, in the sort of forward direction, but then you'd need to uh, reverse the current, or what's called the pull, uh, in the opposite direction. And the way to get that is to have those two uh, transistors um, set up as, as we show here, and here we're just showing the joystick. So the simple arrangement is you have your joystick, uh, the output is the base current for this pair, and then uh, the other end of the coil is our common. Now, uh, now we'll look at how this fits in the bigger circuit. Um, pretty much the entire circuit put together. Um, at its core in the lower left here is the push-pull circuit that I just uh, showed you in some detail. And this would be, say, the X coil and then another one for the Y coil. And here, this is just showing in the top left the um, joystick with its two potentiometer outputs going to each of those main circuits and then just the power supply and the only other little things that we added in were just some indicator lights um, which we hooked up between the coil and the common in both cases. That ended up being quite helpful so that uh, in the testing phases, we don't, we didn't always know, did we have a magnetic field on or what direction it's pointed. Okay, we'll go to the uh, left. We'll go to the right. Go back. And we can go up. We can go down. And we have full 2D control, so we can go, say, to the upper right. Back. We could um, go to the lower right. Back. And let them collect up again. We could go chasing after the little bug over there in the top. Oh, he's <laughs> we scared him off. The edge of the peloton moves at about 50 micrometers per second. Uh, we measured that. We have a calibration slide, so um, it's not clear from what you saw how we do that, but uh, it comes out to about 50 micrometers per second. Individual bacteria can swim several times faster than that, but we were just measuring that leading edge, which is um, understandably a little slower.